what is LP, little a? How would you describe it to someone that is hearing this sort of complicated term for the first time? Sure. And the first thing is to just let everybody know lipoprotein little a, it's an inherited uh, disorder. So you have to uh, receive the right genes from mom and dad to have it. But it is the single most genetic uh, determinant of uh, atherosclerotic vascular disease and calcific aortic stenosis. So two mega pathologies. And it's basically, if you took the whole globe, it's in one out of five people. In certain populations like the Africans, it's one out of three. So this is hardly some rare genetic disorder. Everybody has heard about familial hypercholesterolemia, and that has an incidence of about one in 200 to 250 people. So you can see, my God, as you walk down the street, uh, two out of 10 people will probably have LP little a pathology at work, and the tragedy is they don't know it. It's not being tested by the overwhelming majority of clinicians. So many have not even heard about it. So with that being said, and this is why it's a topic of interest that you wanted to elaborate further on, because it's a big, big time problem. All right. So uh, you mentioned our previous uh, podcast, we spent a lot of time on the ApoB family of lipoproteins. And just a, a quick uh, remembrance, ApoB is a structural peptide, a very large protein that has the ability to bind to lipids. And it is the main structural protein that enwraps the lipid moieties that are found in what's called the ApoB family. Previously, they were called the beta lipoproteins, and they include your very low-density lipoproteins, your intermediate density, and your low-density lipoproteins. Because of its much longer plasma half-life of LDL compared to VLDL and LDL or IDL, uh, about 95% of your ApoB particles are LDLs. So LDLs are actually a heterogeneous family of lipoproteins within a certain density range. And they basically vary by their diameter and a little bit with their core composition. So you have small LDLs, intermediate size, and big LDLs. Now within the LDL family, an LDL is simply a, a lipoprotein with one molecule of ApoB on it. So it's LP-ApoB. That is the, uh, the shorthand signature for a, a, an LDL particle. So, but there's a, they not only vary by their size, buoyancy, composition, there's a different uh, sort of member of the LDL family. And this is what lipoprotein little a is. So if I took an LDL particle, and somehow attached to it another surface protein, which binds to the ApoB. And if I call that other protein apoprotein little a, meaning small case a, not a capital A, for the audience, and there's great confusion on this, lipoprotein capital A refers to an HDL particle. Those are the apoproteins that are uh, structurally found on HDLs. We're talking about little a. Uh, so if I took this uh, other peptide and stuck it to ApoB, I have an LDL plus apoprotein little a, voila, that is what a lipoprotein little a particle is. Uh, and we'll get into it, but the, that ApoA is your liver either produces it or it doesn't, depending did you inherit the genes that make the liver construct that uh, protein. Yeah, that was what I was kind of interested in next, where do these uh, lipoprotein little a's come from? Is it that the liver is producing that entire molecule, lipoprotein little a, or is it that the liver is producing the apoprotein a protein, which is going into circulation and then somehow attaching to low density lipoproteins that are already in circulation? Uh, we've come full circle on that, and it took years to really discover this. This is difficult research. And it was always thought that the liver would produce apoprotein little a and secrete it into plasma, and it would jump on the first LDL particle that cruised by. 
Then there was a belief that between hepatocytes and the plasma, there's a, a space called the space of DISS, D-I-S-S-E. And it thought, aha, that's where ApoA jumps on the ApoB moiety of an LDL particle, and then it's released into plasma. Now the consensus, and this is just over the last couple of years, is that apoprotein little a is, of course, made in the liver, but the liver also makes what is called primordial LDL particles. And ApoA marries, joins on the ApoB within the hepatocyte, and then it is secreted as a whole particle. And this is important for so many reasons, because if we understand that step, we might be able to modify the construction step, and that would, of course, uh, affect the production of a uh, undesirous, undesirous lipoprotein. So it is definitely made in the liver and then secreted. The other interesting thing, in the liver, when apoprotein little a marries this primordial uh, LDL, remember the liver makes a lot of VLDL particles too. But the VLDL is much bigger, has a very different shape, and apoprotein little a will not bind to a VLDL or even an IDL particle. So that's why LP little a is sort of a member of the LDL family, even though it's not really an LDL particle because it's carrying this other uh, passenger, a, a hitchhiker sort of so that jumps on the particle. You mentioned at the top there, this is considered an inherited disorder. So just to kind of double click on that, thinking about the synthesis of lipoprotein little a that we're talking about here. And and I think you said people of African ancestry tend to have elevated LP little a or at higher risk of eleva elevations. They're the same risk, a. but they have much higher concentrations. Yeah. Much higher concentrations. So is it that their liver, because of some gene mutation, is just producing more of that apo protein little a correct uh so a little bit about how proteins are made in cells including the liver as a master <laughs> maker of a lot of proteins uh proteins are constructed in a cellular organelle called the uh, endoplasmic reticulum and on the endoplasmic reticulum are little subunits called ribosomes and they start they gather amino acids and they start sticking them together and after you get x amount of amino acids bound together you have a protein or a peptide whatever the short protein but why does the uh, ribosomes do that who tells them to make this protein or don't make this protein. And of course, that's our DNA, which is located in the nucleus of the cell. So if you inherit it in the LPA gene, and you get, we have two alleles of it, so you get one from mom and one from dad, so it's called the codominant inheritance. If you get the right type, or the, maybe I should say the wrong type of APOA gene that becomes part of your DNA, it gets uh, translated into messenger RNA, which leaves the nucleus, goes over to the endoplasmic reticulum, and it can be read and tr uh, transcripted into protein synthesis. So if you have the wrong type of LPA gene, you're going to make apoprotein little a. If you don't have those genes, uh, you might not. Adding to the complexity, because we have two LPA genes, one from mom and one from dad, Suppose both mom and dad gave you the wrong type of uh, LPA gene, as opposed to neither mom or dad had it, then you can't have it and you certainly can't pass it on to your progeny. But if mom and dad both gave you one, you can actually have two types of apoprotein little a, one that will match the one dad's liver made and one that will make uh, match the one that mom's liver made. So when we assay isoforms of ApoA in the laboratory, uh, the majority of people have two uh, types of apo little a floating around. And it, it's another way of adding to its complexity and understanding its measurement and its laboratory assay. So you could also, of course, if you just got it from mom or dad and not for any other parent, then that's a null LPA allele. So you'll still be making it, 
but it'll just, you can blame one parent, not both parents. And uh, listen, nobody's genotyping their parents to know who they got it from. Sometimes, because LP little a is associated with a lot of premature atherosclerotic disease or aortic stenosis, if you can get a really good family history and and either your mother or father's telling, oh, yeah, my uncle, my brother, my grandfather, they all had a heart attack prematurely. You sort of know which side of the family the LPA had come from or so. So it's just a little clue. In the old days, that was, hey, if you do have a strong family history of premature vascular disease, make sure you test for LP little a. Most of the guidelines have now shifted to, no, it's a mandatory assay once in everybody's life. Because it is so prevalent, uh, you, you don't have to test many people to find it. And like any uh, uh, cardiovascular risk factor, the sooner you discover something, there, uh, there's certainly in the year 2024 and many things we can do about it to ward off some of the misery that it's going to produce. So the genes... Uh, get translated and uh, then get transcribed at the endoplasmic reticulum and you are making apoprotein little a. 